are here with Charles Salzman, and Charles grew up in El Paso, Texas. He is here to share one of his growing up recipes that he made with his family and saw made many times in El Paso. And so with that, I'm gonna say, take it away, Charles. Tell us about what you're gonna do here. Well, we're, we're gonna make migas uh, this morning, and uh, migas are kind of a classic Spanish-Mexican dish that, that I think are related to the same way people view uh, omelets in France. Oh. It's utilitarian, you can make it with anything that you have. It can be made with leftovers or you can spice it up and make it as a main dish. And so I found that this is a great recipe to have. It's handy, it's quick, and you can feed lots of people and it's inexpensive. Great. It has All lots right. of good things going for it. All right. Well, we have some eggs here from Central Market, and would you like me to get started? That'd be great if you'd crack some uh, eggs, eggs and just put them in that bowl for me, please. Right. And then normally, when, when you're making meat, because you'd end up with some leftover tortillas that perhaps you had from the night before. These are perfect because they're broken and cracked, and we'll just uh, cut them up and we're going to use them. So we like dish. broken and cracked. All right. Well, I yeah. relate to that. <laughs> it's, it's a great leftover. And we'll cut this into some pieces. Again, it doesn't really matter. That it's whatever size pieces you like. Um, and we're gonna crisp these up in the pan when we start. Uh, and that'll be the beginning of this recipe. Then we're gonna follow it with typically what you'd have is some leftover pico de gallo with tomatoes and onions and some hot peppers. Uh, perhaps a little cilantro, cilantro might be left in it from the night before. So maybe like the Friday uh, night meal. Exactly. And of course we are preparing a brunch here, so. And then we like to top it with a little avocado if you have some of that, but it isn't a requirement. It's just again, whatever you have that's available and that you would like to use. That certainly makes we're sense. Gonna, we're gonna make this recipe for, uh, for the four of us. So the, right. this would be four adult servings. If you uh, had some kids, you might want to cut back on the eggs a little bit uh, if they won't eat it. Or if you have uh, big eaters, you can put a couple extra eggs in. The All proportion right. doesn't really make much okay. difference. We'll kind of, we'll put, post the recipe for say four people then. Perfect. Does that sound good? All right. And would you like me to start on this onion? Would you would, please. Uh, and we just need about a fourth of a cup or so of diced uh, okay. onion. And it can be anything. You can use yellow onion, white onion, uh, red onion, again, you have pico left over from the night before, mm -hmm. then you save this step and just use what you have in the refrigerator. Oh. Yeah, I love this <coughs> whole using up what's in the refrigerator well, idea. I'm going to cut a tomato and we're going to dice that up and I'll put that on your board so we have that because normally you'd have some of that left over. Right. And what I've found is that when, you, when you're making this, I like to remove the seeds. Um, sometimes that makes the the eggs and the dish a little bit wet and the seeds are not uh, great, so I'm just gonna squeeze them all. Now we're gonna right just now. put it right in this bowl. Okay. And that's about enough. So you're gonna use, again, like you are making pico de gallo, uh, more or less of equal parts of peppers and uh, onions and tomatoes. Pop that in there. Also, you would put in some leftover cheese that you might have from the night before. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind opening that package, right, that would be good. awesome. We have some H-E-B, three cheddar, three yes. cheese cheddar. Diced tomatoes. Since we didn't have it the night before, before. so <laughs> maybe we'll use this for the next dish. Okay, there we go. So that's done, that's ready, and now we're basically okay. ready. So if you would help me, okay. if you would Remove the seeds from those two right. peppers. Now, how do you like to remove what the seeds? What I do is I just, because again, we're, we're just gonna cut these up in pieces. I like to cut the ends off. Right. Cut them in half, and then just uh, scrape the seeds out. And you don't have to worry about the okay. rib because that's gonna cook just fine. In the Typically, this would be like a bowl that you would have left over from the pico de gallo. Oh, it, yeah, it's starting to look like pico de gallo by the moment here. Sure. Right. Okay, so now we're ready to put all this together. I'm going to put a this few so more pretty. of these in. I yeah, love it's colorful. These beautiful colors. And I think that's going to be. Isn't this the Mexican flag as well? <laughs> right? I think that's yeah, right. Maybe. Is that where it just came from? <laughs> the tomatoes, right. the peppers. <laughs> 
So Charles, how did you get to El Paso? How did your family arrive there? Well, my, my dad's family, and my, my dad was from Louisiana, and my mom uh, was from Kentucky. Next state over. <laughs> um, and uh, he was in the military, and, okay. and so we uh, got, to, they got to El Paso long before I came along. Oh. Um, I was born in El Paso, I was, so I'm a first, I am a first generation Texan. My wife, Julie, is, uh, uh, family is from Texas, so she's a multi-generational Texan. But y'all have two children, two children, and now they are They're native official Texan, native, Texas, born in Texas. Born so. in Uvalde, Texas, of all places. There you go. Okay, so we're ready to get started. Um, we're going to put some oil in the pan, get some heat under it. Normally, it, again, with this kind of recipe, if you have leftover bacon, you probably have some bacon grease. Put that oh, in the pan okay. to cook the oh, tortillas. Because we're going to crisp this up and get some texture. So we're looking for the texture. texture. That's what that provides. So we're going to have some soft texture from this, and uh -huh. we're going to have some crispy texture from this okay. to go with the soft eggs and the tomatoes and peppers. Okay. And then, if you like a little extra crispy, you can even use the broken chips in the bottom of the bag for oh, the tortilla chips. That's this great, because how many of us have those? We open the bags and of chips, a, and then there's this the, whole the, thing at the, the bottom. bottom. Yeah. Well, again, being frugal and you want to right. eat it, it's perfectly fine to eat. So Just this is to the scoop dish a little of that up and throw them in. And I guess the, if you weren't going to make it the next day, could you throw them in a bag and put them in the freezer and then just at, pull them out absolutely. for something yeah. like so, this? So, again, okay. it's, a, it's a way to use up everything and have something really great. Yay! And we're gonna start by putting these corn tortilla pieces, and we're gonna crisp these up and cook them a little bit. We wanna cook the vegetables just a little bit. We don't want them to be too, have too much of a raw flavor. So we're gonna put those in, get that started. So we have in the pan tortillas, tomatoes, onions and our peppers and this is going to cook quite quickly so we get the eggs in and then we're going to add the cheese pretty quickly because if we don't then what will happen is this the egg will cook so quickly that uh, that the cheese won't have a chance to melt and you can cook these as wet leave them wet or as dry as you like it isn't uh, special about how that's done We're ready to serve, so we have a serving spoon, have some avocado on top. People can get their plate and pick out whatever they like out of this uh, wonderful mix. And we would normally serve this with some uh, South Texas grapefruit. Oh, South uh, Texas grapefruit, uh, of course. Okay, ruby red grapefruit from the Ruby Valley red, doesn't get any better than uh, that. And uh, orange juice, milk, coffee, whatever you have. Or if it's dinner, you perhaps even a glass of wine. Oh, I like that idea. This is absolutely beautiful. I say, let's eat. Let's eat. All right. I think about Texas and I think about this this great diversity that's here but I also think about the landscape it's a, it's a state that has a great deal to offer offer everyone you can go to the coast if you and lakes and uh, you can go to the quiet solitude of Big Bend and West Texas and the Fort Davis area the high desert and you go to El Paso and you can get this mix of Mexican culture with the native uh, Tigua Indian culture and the, the Indus Leather Indians and uh, among others and enjoy this wonderful uh, experience in nature. Uh, there's great fishing and hunting and then there's the great city life of uh, Dallas and Fort Worth with opera and symphony and plays and all of the cultural experience, great music and there's great science here. So you have this great mix of mountains and desert and pasture land and culture that all gets rolled in. So it's a beautiful place. <laughs>